25 minutes to the top of the hour. Our conversation continues with Dr. Alex Kamau, and we're looking at, um, okay, so the return of the Finance Act 2023, but then the tenets beyond that and what it really means for prudent financial governance, uh, or rather, you know, proper government spending. And I think we've been asking this question for the longest time. What does it mean when you say that um, a government is fiscally responsible? When we talk about austerity measures, but then we see that positions are created. And we talk about austerity measures, but we think that there's a lot of, we see that there's a lot of spending on things that actually, you know what, you could actually get by with, you know, standing around a table and having a teacup. But we see that this makes for government spending into the millions. How can you say we want to be financially prudent, whereby we see on this other side so much spending? How can the two work? What do you mean by financial prudence? When you say financial prudence, I... Well, I mean... Especially in a government. <laughs> so it's, it's making okay. decisions whereby you, you, you must be prudent, especially whereby you have huge responsibility when it comes to the things that you should be using to protect livelihoods. When we're talking about education, what are we looking at today? When we're talking about health, just take a walk around the country. And then you're saying you can be lavish on one side whereby we're asking you to be prudent. And you can't. Let me ask the question. Would you then say that we have a very clear understanding of uh, how our financial jurisprudence is structured? Mm. We understand it, and it is clear. But this discussion that we're having seems to point to uh, an executive that is determined to ignore those very structures and to simply implement what they think suits them best. What, what, would, what would that look like? A good question. Actually, for me, financial uh, prudence means uh, cutting your clothes according to your size. But uh, the government is not doing that. And uh, why I say that is because uh, we, 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 we continue even to borrow at very high interest rates because uh, financial prudence en encompasses uh, even how you are sourcing uh, your, your money. Mm -hmm. At 18% <laughs> for treasury bills and treasury bonds, I, I, wonder, I, I, I wonder where does government uh, plan to, to invest that money so that uh, it can be able to pay that loan at that percentage. Why I'm saying that is because uh, out of all the companies that have shares listed in Nairobi Securities Exchange, mm. there's none that pays uh, dividends at a rate of 10% uh, of what you have invested. None. None. There's none. none. There's none. So we are, that is causing even what we, we call uh, crowding out of the private sector. Mm -hmm. Because in, instead of you and I investing money to the companies that are listed in uh, securities exchange, Nairobi Securities Exchange, we are taking money to the government. So there's imbalance because the government is not in the business of making investment. Mm -hmm. The part, the, the, Private sector is better in doing that. If uh, you give private sector a shilling, it will be able to make it uh, two shillings, three shillings over time. But the government uh, does not do that. I, I usually find it very, 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 very interesting that uh, the government is borrowing at a very punitive rate of 18%. Mm -hmm. And even the person that uh, you are borrowing from is not able to invest his money at such a rate. Why would somebody be willing to actually borrow at that very high rate? Well, what is it that would drive somebody? Because it's not just risky, it's very risky. Why? Because uh, the exposure is, is, is enormous. It's called uh, moral hazard. Yes. Moral hazard uh, is a concept where the doer of the action is not responsible for the outcome of his actions. Mm -hmm. He is not bothered. It's, it's for instance, uh, you have a matatu and uh, you have hired a driver. This driver might misuse this vehicle, uh, ride it in the, on pavements, <laughs> does all manner of things. Climb but uh, when the car has a mechanical issue, it is not him. It is you. Uh, yes, it is the owner 
who will cater for those uh, repairs. The same thing, the government, uh, even including what we see today, like now the CBC, uh, the, the CBA, mm -hmm. that uh, the teachers uh, are clamoring for, for its uh, implementation. Someone who was in the government five years ago promised teachers that uh, they would uh, raise their salaries. Yes. And they knew very well they will not be there are five years to come. Mm. So the government of the day will take care, <laughs> will, will sort out uh, that problem. Mm. So financial prudence is basically planning for today and also putting future in mind. And being cautious, is and it not? Being cautious. Is it not being cautious? Because yes. you can say, and maybe from a financial point of view, you can maybe correct, but uh, wouldn't you want to, if you... I've often said that if you're not taking care of the very basic for your citizenry, then you have no business uh, in government. They, they, they say, it may be extreme, mm, but... Um, mm. it, it makes sense because uh, they say when you take care of pennies, the pounds will take care of themselves. Mm. And it, it, it is the small leak that uh, will sink the ship. Mm. And uh, what I'm seeing, like recently, we were downgraded by all the three major credit rating agencies, mm -hmm. international credit rating agencies. Mm -hmm. uh, Moody started and uh, downgraded the, 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 the credit rating of Kenya, yeah. sovereign, so, uh, the sovereign uh, financial instruments that mm -hmm. Kenya offers, mm -hmm. that is treasury bonds and treasury and euro bonds. Then uh, Fitch followed, then just the other day, S&P followed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, they also downgraded three financial institutions here in Kenya. NCBA received uh, a beating, KCB, uh, KCB and uh, INM. Mm. And the, the sole, main lenders. The main, the main lenders to the government. Yes. They are the main lenders to the government. Yeah. And actually, it's like also these credit rating agencies, they are calling out on these commercial banks that uh, your main, the main essence that you exist is to really facilitate and foster growth in the private sector by giving them credit. But why are you giving making credit to the... Expensive making the it very expensive. Giving them very high interest. Very high interest. Mm. So, and, and there's something that they, they, they say that uh, when uh, the target becomes the measure, then it, the, when, when the measure becomes the target, mm. then it ceases to be a good measure. When the measure becomes the target, then it ceases to be a good measure and what i mean by that if the measure of financial performance by commercial banks is uh, how much they lend how, 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 how much they earn or how much money they make from lending mm -hmm. I, th I think that is mismatched because uh, they can as well lend to international borrowers and uh, by doing so they deny locals that credit that would not really help them to achieve the goal that they were made to exist in the first place. But then if we take your view, then are you then suggesting or are you saying that this brings about a situation that could perhaps be an overexposure for the banks? It is already. It is already. They are exposed. They are already exposed in a big way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm silent because that one is not good. <laughs> There's a country in West Africa called Ghana where the stories began just like these ones of ours, there was not much of a difference. And uh, what then set this house of cards tumbling was when they defaulted. And then suddenly, it was chaotic. Completely chaotic. It's likely to happen here. Yes, it is very likely because anything, any investment of the nature, whether it's in government paper, or there's insecurities, suddenly the value didn't take a dip, it took a dive. And everything that previously had been certain was now up in the air completely. Completely up in the air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were forced to take haircuts. Serious uh, haircuts. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things that the government has spoken about is um, how to manage the wage bill. There are two areas of our finances that we hemorrhage seriously. Mm -hmm. One is payment on uh, loans, mm. and secondly, the recurrent expenditure. Mm. The heaviest is um, salaries, mm. which takes about 1.1 T mm. out of the whole budget. Mm. Then um, followed by, and, and I, I just saw a story yesterday also that the expenditure in running 
of the government uh, offices mm -hmm. has crossed the one one trillion mark. one trillion mark mm -hmm. so, so that is mm -hmm. the what expenditure for running the government forget yeah. about salaries forget mm -hmm. about the other expenses salary which is a constant just to run them motor vehicles i assume i assume flowers yes, Mandazi yes, yes. And newspapers, tea, and, newspapers tea. and all yes yes for the first time crossed the one t mark mm -hmm. wait so we're already at two t yes Without development. Yeah. I, I like tea because when it says trillion, I get depressed. Yes. <laughs> yes. Tea. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. With and God. it's just government doing its business. Recurrent. We on our, on yeah. our behalf. Yeah. Recurrent. Keeping the lights mm. on, doing yeah. the runarounds, having mm. fuel in vehicles and mm. things like that. You must not leave out choppers, Lindu. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course, that's, you know. Mm. And uh, not doing anything. So not doing anything de developmentally nothing they've not mm -hmm. touched it at has not all, been at touched all. At all. Le let's add another 1.2 trillion for debt servicing the, yes so it's yes. debt and the first charge yes which is the first charge so this is 3.3.6 uh, yes trillion. 3.6 it's an entire budget that's <sighs> the entire budget yes. void mm -hmm. of development zero yes, yes. okay mm -hmm. so this is the question yes how can you say that actually government is being run <laughs> in a cautious, if CT doesn't like prudent, in a well, cautious, I, li I like prudent. You like I, prudent? I, just, I just wanted you to explain what you meant. You you meant by it? Yeah. Yes. So in this case, how mm. do we say that it's being run in that manner if your entire annual budget, which is supposed to be combination of development as well as these other things, is not even being met? Is it not just staring down this? dangerous rabbit hole then of number one default number two underdevelopment number three continually being delisted on these three lists that you've talked about yes you i, I wouldn't say that uh, the government ex ex is exercising uh, prudent financial management mm. it is doing completely the opposite and the hole that we find ourselves in uh, we are only digging it deeper mm. because uh, as i had said that uh, the government of the day probably is envisioning that in the next five years uh, either it will not be there or uh, they will cross the, board, the, the, the bridge once they, they get, get there. there. So it's, it's, it's very sad. It's very sad. And uh, what actually saddens me the most is that uh, right now the borrowing cost, the central bank uh, rate is at 12.75%. Uh, they reduced uh, the other day by 0.25% from 13% to 12.75%. And uh, that did not uh, make much change mm -hmm. in terms of uh, facilitating better access of credit by the private sector. Right now, if you go to any commercial bank, mm -hmm. you are likely to get a loan facility from a rate of uh, 22 to 23%. And uh, that's what has made the money become so scarce in the, in the, in the economy. And uh, you wonder why the government is not understanding that because they are saying that uh, we are having uh, money stock out. And because we are having money stock out, we need to print more money. Even if you print more money and you make it very expensive for, for the private sector to, to, to access, you will still print more money because uh, you, you, yes, the solution that you are coming up is not addressing the problem of the day. Actually, the problem is who sits at the uh, who is in charge of our monetary policy yes. and the fiscal policy. I yes. think that's where our problem is. Yes. But before city comes in, <laughs> I, I, I like to ask this as my final question. Yes. The president the other day said that uh, in the next budget, mm. we will do what is called zero budgeting. Mm. Is this a solution? First of all, what is zero budgeting? It means, you know, now what they do is they start from the existing. So last year we gave you 30 mm. billion. Mm. This year, let's add five. Mm. Or no, 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 you mm. need to utilize. Mm. Let's subtract mm. three. You have uh, 27. That is so, zero budgeting. Yeah, that, so no, that, that is, so what they're doing from next year, according to the president, mm. Mm. is we are looking at a sector. We're looking at the education sector mm. Mm. and budgeting based on need from zero. We are not considering. Wait, wait a moment. Idea. What have they been doing all this time? Adding. Adding. So they to say the we gave you 30 billion yeah, last yeah. year. Mm. <laughs> Let's mm. add you two. No, no, no. I understand. But <laughs> you add because you've understood there's a need to add, isn't it? No, 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 no because, but in this no, case, no, no. you're just adding. So it would appear as though we gave budgeting you something. Just keep quiet over there. Yes. No, budget, but, but, they used to budget for corruption presupposes mm -hmm. that there's a plan 
based on need, isn't it? One yeah, would hope. Sure. One not would for hope. a government. Mm -hmm. One would hope. And maybe stop me if I'm wrong, Dr. Yes. Kamau. Yes. But uh, you look at the landscape. Yes. I mean, just from basic business 101, mm. that's what budgeting is. Mm. You look at the landscape and you yes. say, okay, these are the needs. One, two, three, four, five. Mm. This is the kind of money that we have. Mm. We're going to apply that mm. over the need. Mm. However, not just apply it, yes. but we're going to say it's going to run in this manner yes, yes. for this period of time. Mm. And that will allow us. Mm. If we don't have enough, we're going to get it from somewhere else. Yes. But we're going to make sure that we can fill the gaps. Mm. No? Mm. Mm. Okay. It doesn't appear as <laughs> will it work? Will it work? <laughs> it, it, it should work. Uh, it should work. It, it is a bit uh, more cumbersome. And uh, to start with, there are many types of uh, budgets. One, uh, the one that the government has been used is uh, incremental budgeting. And incremental budgeting uh, is the one that uh, you have explained very well. That uh, the previous year we had given the Ministry of Education uh, six that billion. So because we have expanded the budget. We can, all, we can only also increase uh, what we had allocated to them by maybe 10%. This is an acceptable practice. It, yes. it, it, is, it is not a good practice. There, there, are, there are times that uh, it, it is relevant, <laughs> especially when <laughs> you don't have much planning time. What do you mean we, we don't have, have a whole year? year. Yeah. 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 How? Septe this yes. September. Yes. September is yes. when the budget process starts. actually starts. Mm. Mm. For next mm. year's For next budget. Year. Yes. So what are we talking about that there's no time? No, no, I'm saying there are cases when incremental budgeting uh, is appropriate, okay. but not for the case of the government. And uh, When is it appropriate? W w w when it is uh, appropriate uh, is when you... The... The, the expenditure does not change much, but right now, but in terms of the government, the expenditure does change a lot because uh, this 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 year we want to the, the Ministry of Education to be allocated more money because uh, of uh, 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 constructing more classes okay. for mm. for grade nine. Mm. But uh, if okay. we increase the uh, the uh, budget by a hundred billion because of that, then next year. Dr. Mao, yes. what you just said vis-a-vis yes. -vis the classroom, that's voodoo. You know why? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the, when people exit yes. the system that we currently have in secondary school, yes. there'll be empty classes. That's true. All right? That's empty. True. Mm -hmm. There'll be no students. Mm -hmm. The classes have already been built. They yes. exist. Mm -hmm. What are we building new classes for? Which is easier, to build new classes or to move students into those empty classes? That, that, that will happen, but uh, that notwithstanding, the population is also growing. By a million... Uh, the population yes, is also yes, growing. Yes, yes, yes. It yes. tends to grow. In fact, yes. it leads me to the question that I actually had in mind before yes. I subtract myself. Yes. Under what circumstances would we have a situation where not much changes? Because you mentioned that perhaps there are situations where this incremental way of going about your business affairs is when perhaps there hasn't been very much change what would occasion a situation where there isn't much change? There's always change. There, 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 there's, there's always change. At, at the government level, there's always change. Mm. But uh, at the household level, maybe nothing much is changing at the household level. In terms of demand, in, in terms of needs? Yes, yes, yes. Even your salary. You know your salary, if it is 100,000, it is likely to remain that for the next two to three years. So the budget for this year will be the budget <laughs> for, 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 for the subsequent year until maybe you have uh, a, a different source of income. But for the government, uh, the, the dynamics are different. Many How? things change. B because, you know, the, the, the larger the, the government is, the more, the more center of expenditure it has and mm. the, more, the, the more the movements. Because, uh, like now, we are talking that the government has got uh, 347 parastatals. Mm -hmm. How many? 347 parastatals. Mm -hmm. Hey. There are that many. There, there are that many. With, without margin or plus. With, without without margin. Without margin. Without margin. Without okay. margin. Mm. Without margin. Mm. And and uh, for, for for instance, now with the issue of margin, that's when the the, the zero the zero budget the, the 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 zero budgeting will come will be more applicable, because if uh, a certain ministry had uh, about uh, ten parastatals, and these parastatals have been condensed into five, then. We cannot continue to use incremental budgeting where we are saying that ministry had given them uh, um, uh, 200 billion. Now we are going to add 10% of that because the reason why we are margin and consolidating the number, the, the, the number of parastatals that we have is to really work on the, on, on the wage bill.
Mm. You know, there's what you've just described to me, if, and if I were to uh, juxtapose it with conversations that politicians in this country have, especially those who are currently in power, it's what you call vacuum activity. A lot is done, there's a lot of dust raised, but it's a zero-sum game. Nothing much is achieved. The president was in Nyamira. He promised them a university. There was a working group that among the things they suggested was that we should merge universities, we should rationalize this entire process with every student population, courses, and so forth, which means reduce the number of universities. He goes and promises them a university. Okay? So it's a good promise. Mm -hmm. People equate universities with all manner of imaginary things. Okay? <laughs> but it will not achieve anything. So when we have 347 parastatals, what it tells me is that our idea of development is to grow the bulge of government so that we can do whatever it is we do and increase the expenditure of government. That is our idea of how we can grow economy. You expand the government. You expand parastatals. You expand people to pay. You expand the running of all these entities. Mm. Everything you expand it. You expand it. Mm -hmm. And so money that is meant for development is then excised and put into recurrent so that we can expand it. That's the idea. Surely, which country on this planet has grown without, <laughs> without sort of plan and design? Which one? Or are we pioneering this thing? None. It's, 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 it's very sad. And, and, and actually, one thing I don't like is that uh, also the government continue to fund public universities because public universities should, should be actually be on the, front line, on the front line in terms of exercising creativity. We should see public universities actually coming to, to train the SMEs and charging them some fees <laughs> so, so that they can... We should have partnership with such institutions. With such institutions. Yes. Mm. And uh, we, for instance, to publish a, an article in a journal, sometimes we pay even 100,000. And these public universities can also create their own journals. So that scholars in Kenya, instead of going to publish their articles uh, in Europe and in America, they can as well be publishing here in Kenya. And if I'm publishing an article, I pay 100,000 to Nairobi University. And that 100,000 will help the university to be more self-sufficient. Dr. But Kamau, when you look across board, I'm sorry, when you look across board, um, it's not for want of expertise in Kenya. It's not for want of ideas. It's not for want of even the resources, whether you want to look at it from a human perspective or anything else. The experts reside in treasury. They literally are crunching the numbers. They know what to advise. The people who are in the education sector, the experts who sit behind that we can't see them, they are there, they know what to advise. Kenya has a wealth of human resource who would then be able to know what to do. But it would appear to me that this is just a case of a behavior that doesn't allow you to do the right thing and to do it consistently in a sustained manner. So you cannot have that proper behavior when it comes to fiscal responsibility. So it seems like it's a character issue as opposed to a resource and expertise issue. Is that the case? Exactly. It's an attitude issue. It's a culture issue. We have uh, a lot of brilliant people and good ideas, ideologies, but uh, the government likes operating in chaos and in, 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 <laughs> in, 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 a, in a place where there's yep. no order. So, so that... Uh, misappropriation and mis mismanagement of public funds can continue and i if, if i'm hiring someone oh. i am not so much interested about uh, your skill level mm. i'm interested with uh, your attitude if your attitude is right we can always train you for skills but if your skills is okay are okay and you have attitude issue even if we do what it will, will not be able to change you. Mm. You could be a drunkard, you could be a person who does not respect <coughs> time, you could be a person who does not respect deadlines, but you are highly skilled. So I, I always put attitude before skills. And for, as we have put it uh, and do, mm. the government, what we have, we, do, we, are, we are not, uh, defi de de we are not uh, deficient of uh, resources mm -hmm. or uh, good brains. What we have is a character issue, which is an attitude issue, which is highly highly 
would take so much time to change. Or maybe divine intervention at this rate. Maybe divine intervention. <laughs> Dr. Alex Kamal, thank you so much for being here this morning. Let's see what happens. But again, you know, I think a lot more deliberation is needed here uh, to sort out some of these issues so we don't go the way that we've seen a lot of others go. Thank you for being in the hot seat this morning. Um, conversations continue. Hope to see you in the near future. Santa Sana. Thank, thank you so much. It's 9 a.m. As the sun rises, so do we.